Hi everyone, just wanted to share with you a little bit of my history and where I came um, to become a, a, a very skilled educator because I was a, an educator for many, many years which led me down um, a lot of different quality paths. So some of, I'm going to share with you my top three influences that I feel really shaped me as a professional working with children. So I would love you to jump on board and check these out and really think about what this means for you and your, uh, as a practitioner working with children and how you can do this. And look, I started at a time when, um, you know, the, the legislation was obviously very different way back then. I've been doing this for in this sector for over 30 years. So I haven't been a practitioner with children for a little while but um, these as I said these were my, my top ones that as the as our sector was shifting and as requirements became tougher and tougher on us and that was you know changes from um, from nothing at all as far as standards go to the accreditation system and then from the accreditation system to the standard system so I've seen the changes go right through um, so these are probably my top three. I stayed awake in bed thinking about what were my top three influences that made me what I consider a very good um, educator. And when I say a really good educator, I actually mean working with families also. So these are probably my main, not probably, these are my main three that I could come up with. I'm gonna do a theorist one also. So I'm gonna do my top three theories in how I've based a lot of my practices and those sorts of things. So, the EPI study. The EPI study was released, oh, and don't quote me on the year, I think it was 2009 that that was released. So the effective provision of preschool education. Now that was a longitudinal study that was carried out in the UK and that followed a group of children right through from birth through, uh, I'm pretty sure until they transitioned into school, but I took a lot out of that study around um, you know, what is early childhood education and what does that look like and what is the optimal model for that, which family daycare fits into by the by. So that's one of the reasons why I started moving in this direction towards family daycare. So that's, I'm gonna put links to all of this in here so you don't have to go looking for them. I'll put them all in here. So, and that talked about the value of reciprocal relationships and what a reciprocal relationship looks like for children. Now, there's a couple of different terminologies that you can use as far as reciprocal relationships go. And it, reciprocal is reciprocal, so it's that give and take. And, um, you know, children, if a child asks you and they say, to you, you know, we want fairy bread every day. Well, let's talk about why you can't have fairy bread every day. So it's not about saying, no, you can't have fairy bread because I'm the adult and I make that decision. It's about supporting their choices, helping them understand why you may not be able to achieve those choices and the information that they need and then supporting that learning as they go. So that's about reciprocal relationships for me. Um, now, back in the day, before it was called reciprocal relationships, we referred to it as just being respectful to children. So, you know, and I often say to my students when I work with classes and training and professional development, those sorts of things, if your girlfriend was crying or if your partner was crying, you wouldn't say, them, stop crying. Stop crying, that's it, we're not gonna have any more. We would say, why are you crying? What can I do to help you? Oh, you poor thing. So we would sympathize and we would empathize with that. If your friend said to you, you know what, I just wanna drive really fast every day, you're not gonna to say to your friend, sure, drive fast every day. You're not gonna say, no, you can't. You're gonna say, do you know what could happen if you drive fast every day? So we assist in learning all the time with other adults. And sometimes I see educators that are missing that step. And that to me is around reciprocation and that is around respect. So once I learnt as a professional to really embed that in my practice, then I became a much better practitioner and an educator and a teacher. So that's how I look at it. And I know I applied that principle and that strategy to adults, even working with adults, but definitely with children. The other thing that really influenced me a lot was the education paradigm, which again, I'm gonna put the link here. And that talks about how our education system is structured and what we've been modeled within. And I know that we're shifting and the world is shifting and um, our education expectations are shifting and we are more inclusive than what we used to be when we were going to primary school or kindergarten or whatever we did as children. But we have been modeled into a, into a mindset that this one challenges. So I really love this video. I make sure that all my students starting either the certificate or the diploma watch this video first and then I let them watch it once or twice 
again, just to make sure that it, it kind of resonates with them as practitioners. So these are my top three influences for me as an educator. So again, as I said, I'm going to pop them in the video. Have a look. They are really interesting. With the Epi study, that's a massive study. So um, look, if you just read the findings, even the findings are influence, influential enough. So have a look at those. Um, and again, jump on board. Uh, happy to help any way we can. But yeah, very influential for me as an educator. See ya. Bye.